All right, what is going on YouTube? What is going on my brothers and sisters in the coding world? This is your brother Greg Ward from Code Enlighten. We're going to do today a review of day number four, Coding Bootcamp, where we learned all about the forms, HTML tag, inputs, labels, text areas, and then finally GitHub and uploading our uh, pages to GitHub and hosting it right there on Git pages. So here we go. All right, what's going on, my brothers and sisters? Let's go ahead and get right into day number four, Coding Bootcamp Review. Uh, today we went over forms, the forms element of HTML, and then secondarily we went over how to uh, create a Git account, github.com, and upload it to create your very first hosted web page on the internet. So uh, no problem, you guys, you're gonna be able to do this, it's real easy. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and share our screen and get to Adam and we'll uh, create our file. All right, let's see. Let's check it out, you guys. No problem. And, uh, all right, let's go ahead and see. All right, so first thing we're going to do is, as usual, we're going to go ahead and since we're creating a forms, uh, I mean, an HTML file, what we did was we, uh, in Mac, we of course hit the control um, button and we click on our folder and we hit new file, which I already did. On uh, Windows, it would be uh, right click. And we went ahead and created this one called forms, forms example.html. All right, so of course, as usual, we begin with typing HTML and we go ahead and click on that and we get a little boilerplate. And we go in here and we Add a title and we'll call this forms example and we'll click into our body right there let's give ourselves a little bit of space so we can see what's going on all right so we're gonna make this real simple uh, just to show you guys the examples so uh, first thing you want to do is you want to type in form no problem click that get your little boilerplate form come up right there and <clears throat> excuse me Let's see if I could uh, give you guys some insight into what uh, all these different things in here mean. The action is going to uh, refer to the action that's going to happen when you uh, submit the form. So as of right now, what's going to happen is it's going to go back to your index. Um, it's going to post everything that is in your form. And the class, I'm not sure if we learned what that is. Let's see if we could, uh, I'm going to pull up. Um, my forms from yesterday and let's see if we have something that uh, talks about class so we left class blank there blank there blank there blank there um, looks like all the things we did yesterday were uh, we left the class blank so we're gonna eventually work on that so you guys that's not something we're gonna be going over today we're gonna be talking about the action and we're gonna be talking about the post like I already said, the post is just going to post everything that you did. So let's go ahead and go back to our forms example and we'll uh, create our first little form. Okay, let me move this out of the way. All right, so look, you guys, first thing you want to do is you want to create a, uh, a label for your form. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Just type in label and you click there. And we're going to go ahead and boom, erase that right there. And the name of our label of our form is going to go right here. So let's just call it your name. All right. No problem. And we'll hit enter. And as you see up there, we got your name. Okay. And then we uh, talk about the input text or the input type. So we type input and we click there. And right there, it's gonna tell us what we want in the uh, in our input. So we're gonna leave that for text for now. And uh, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. So there you go. As you see up there, there's something you can click in. You can type your name. Oops. See, no problem. All right, and I hope you guys can uh, see this and know that the screen's probably a little big, um, a little small, but no problem. All right, so look, let's go ahead and uh, 
we'll create ourselves a little break. And just as a side note, you guys, in Atom, a lot of times when you just uh, go ahead and close the break, as you see, it's got that little close tag. We're gonna get rid of that. And we found that if you don't get rid of that, then you're, uh, as it posts, right? It says right here, it's gonna post everything. When you post uh, all the input of the um, form, if you don't put, if you don't get rid of that little closing bracket in the break tag, the way it posts is, uh, it's not very pretty. So we'd like to take that away and then it puts it in a nice line. So, all right, let's go ahead and continue on. So we got our name and uh, what, what, would, what would a typical form look like? We'll go ahead and put input again and we'll leave text one more time. And, uh, oops, I apologize, I should have put label first. So we'll go ahead and put our label. And this label, once again, as you see the boilerplate that comes up, it says four and it gives some quotes. So the reason why we want to use label as opposed to just some text is because uh, there are some things that you might want to add into that. And I, what I'm told is you will be adding into that later on that will make a difference between uh, just a label and um, just regular text. We'll get rid of that right there. And in between the two label tags, opening and closing, we'll put something else. We'll put your email, no problem. And we'll go ahead and, as you see over there, um, it says your email right there. And as you saw down here, we started already creating our input for the email. And uh, if you look up there, you got two spaces now, your name and your email. All right, so let's create another break so it makes it kind of pretty. And we'll close that, we'll get rid of that closing tag in there, and we'll go ahead to our next line. All right, so just so you guys know, there's lots of cool things that you could put in your input uh, types. So let's go ahead and check some of those out. Um, if you happen to need a password, for instance, um, input, you just have in pass right there in, in the where it usually says text. Just start to type password and you'll see this pop up. Click on password. Now, I keep on doing this, I apologize you guys. Let's go ahead and just erase this for a second. Boom. All right, so the reason why I'm erasing it is because of course, once again, I kept forgetting to put the label. So let's stick our label in there for password. And we'll write password. And as you see, that popped up. Now I'm just gonna paste what I just created, the input type. As you remember, real easy to create the input type. We'll do it once more, one more time so you can see it. We type input and we click that right there. All right. Let's see. So go ahead and hit click on password. I apologize about that noise. My puppy out there is chewing on a bone and I don't want to pull myself away from the computer. So hopefully that's not too loud for you guys. All right, so check this out, you guys. What's really cool about the password input is anything you type in there is going to be hidden. See, as you can see right there, it's all hidden, right? Pretty cool. So you got name, you got the email. What is actually? It's for fun. Say, code enlighten. All right, dot com, and we got the password right there. Now I think. Let me see if this works. If I don't put a full uh, no, okay, I'm not sure. I know that there's one place they were talking about uh, if you don't type in a correct email, if you don't put an at symbol or you don't put a dot com or dot, you know, mean some kind of domain, then uh, it won't actually work and you'll get a little warning sign. All right, so let's pop up back over here to our code and let's check it out. All right, so just to give you some ideas, some more ideas, let's go ahead and put a break real quick. I'm gonna give you some more ideas of other cool inputs you have. And uh, before I do that, I just wanna show you guys, I'm gonna pop over here to um, MDN um, documentation. And here you go, right here is the uh, MDN input HTML form element. And I went here and I clicked input. And as you see, Here's all the types of inputs you got there. So we got a button, right? Let's see if we can 
make this a little bit bigger. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. Um, no, it's not going to allow me to. All right, so we've got a button, right? And then we'll give this type of button. Those are the check boxes. Color, you can do a color picker. You can do date, date time, email, file, hidden, image, month, number, password. You got a little radio button. You can give a range of value, a reset button that resets the contents of the form. They're saying it's not recommended. I'm not sure. Some of these. So uh, some of these things you guys in the HTML is what they call deprecated. They're not really using more. I'm not sure if why they're saying reset is not to recommended, but uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, I mean, for now we're going to say, okay, well, we'll believe them. All right. So let's go ahead and have, go back over to Adam and we'll check out some of these inputs. I'm not going to necessarily keep them on there, but I'm going to show you some of them. So um, check this out. Here is your color. Whoops, did it wrong. You got a color picker. Pretty cool. So as you see right here, color box just popped up. You click on that, and you got a little color uh, picker in there. And I'm not sure why it's just black and white for now. Why is that? All right, it's interesting. That's pretty cool. So you get to pick a color. So let's say that you're making a. Uh, a t-shirt design company or a sticker company or something or anything that requires the user, the customer, um, the client, if you will, of the website to uh, pick a color for something, then they would use something like this. Um, we'll go ahead and create a break again. And we'll erase a lot of this afterwards maybe, but uh, all right, so let's check out some more. How about, uh, checkbox all right we'll make a check mark and by doing that you just once again input type we'll go ahead and just that's already highlighted as you see text so you don't have to even erase it you just start typing checkbox right there boom no problem and let's see if it worked out okay so as you see right away a little check box popped up over there cool very cool create a little break and i'm only doing this break to keep it pretty for you guys to see what's going on. Uh, normally, you know, you're gonna do it according to whatever is required. So if you have, uh, let's see, let's, let's create a label right here before that. And uh, we'll say, check here if you like this tutorial. All right, so as you see, Check here if you like this tutorial. So of course we're gonna check it because we're having fun. All right, so let's go down here. We'll create some more input types just for fun. All right, and let's do a um, let's do one more. Let's let's go back over to the MDNs and we'll see something that we want to use. Let's let's see. Let's go ahead and do the date, all right? So maybe you have something where uh, you might be making a uh, website and it maybe requires, you know, an age limit. Um, I've seen some of the breweries and the wineries, if you wanna go check out their website, they'll require you to enter your birth date and, uh, you know, you wanna be able to check to see some, some of those things or you just wanna, you know, I mean, have the information for uh, your users and maybe a birth date has something to do with that. So let's go ahead and say date. And you see down here, well, oh, actually we're gonna choose this one because as you see, it says input next to it. So we always wanna go ahead and do the correlated thing. All right, so let's see. As you see right here, popped up a date, a little calendar box. And if you click on it, you can choose a day. So we'll say today is, well, let's just pick February 28th just for fun. All right, 228, as you see, it's right there. And we're gonna do one more just for fun, because I think that this is a neat one. Let's see if I can figure, remember out which one this was, but there's a, a text area. All right, so check this out, you guys. So you got all these labels, inputs, that's a big, you know, you have to start off with the form uh, tag, and that form tag is an opening and closing tag. Uh, label is opening and closing tag. 
input is a self-closing tag, I believe, was what they call because there's no uh, input um, closing tag. And of course, uh, we're gonna go down here now and let's go ahead and check this out. There's a text area. Let's see if I can get that to come up. All right, see that? So you got text area. You just start typing text and you got text area. We're gonna click on that. And uh, let's see if I remember right here. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead and leave that. Uh, once again, we'll leave name in there and we'll change the rows. As you can see, a text box popped up right here, but you could choose how many rows you want and how many columns you want. So let's go ahead and choose what they uh, defaulted to yesterday. We'll do 10 rows and 30 columns. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. That's cool, all right. And as you see, it lines up fairly nicely and you can say, a little message, hello, I really, oops, I really love this tutorial and boot camp review. All right, and the cool thing about this uh, text box, you guys, is you can actually stretch it. You know, it's pretty neat. I'm not sure uh, all the purposes of why you stretch it. Maybe you want to see your sentence structure come in a certain way, but pretty neat, you could stretch out that text box. All right, so let's go ahead and do two more things. So now, if you guys think about it, anything that you are doing on the client or the customer end that you are um, sending, if you will, to the, uh, to the server or to the uh, host, you know, the people who are hosting the, the web page, um, anything, if you will, is an input. So whether you, you type in your name, your email, your password, your colors, you check this, put your date, put some text, that's all going to be inputs on your end um, of, as the client, um, the customer, and even the submit. So right right now, like you have this form and you can fill all this stuff out, but how are we going to get it to the people? We need to be able to have a submit button. So that is something you definitely need and you need it at the end of your form uh inputs, you know, all these labels and inputs, you need at the end right before the closing tag. So let's go ahead and type uh, input again, because remember it, your submit button is a form of input because you're clicking submit and it's inputting that in. So instead of text, we're going to type in submit. All right, and there it is right there. No problem. It gives us a little submit button. Let's see if it pops up. I'm not seeing it. What am I doing wrong? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and erase that real quick one more time. Um, before we do that, let's give ourselves a break, right? Boom. All right, let's see what happens. Input. And this should be a submit. Oh, I clicked on the wrong submit. So you remember once again, I think I did. Who knows? Let's see. And does a submit button come up? Uh, let's see what I'm doing wrong. I'm gonna pop over to my yesterday's uh, examples. Uh, apologize, you guys. As I said yesterday, this is something that I am uh, still learning, so. Um, Let's go ahead and see if we can view this real quick. Um, all right, so there, oops, hopefully I messed that up. Okay, so over here I do have underneath the delivery instructions of this little pizza delivery guide or delivery we did have a submit button, so let's see what I did. Um, input type submit. What am I doing wrong? Well, they did have in the value. All right, let's see. 
Maybe that's what the problem is. I didn't have anything of value. Let's check it out. Submit here. Okay, maybe that was what I didn't do wrong. Do right. Okay, so we do have a submit button. You gotta, all right, so let's do that from the beginning just to show you guys. So we click once again, input. We hit that. Instead of text, we type a submit. Click on that. And we need a value to show us the name of our submit button. So we'll just type in submit. All right, as you see right there, there's a clickable button. And right now, remember, when you click the submit button, it's gonna do the action of your form. So let's go ahead and go back to the uh, form example. We'll pull up a preview. Um, oops. Let's go ahead and X these out for a second. And if you remember, you guys, this is our uh, index that we created yesterday um, or just the other day. So we'll do something with that in a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and re preview this. Okay, so we're back to our forms example. We have our submit button. What we have to do though, if we want to be able to uh, send it somewhere is gotta go back up to the action and go to where it says right here under the forms class, our initial um, tag that we created to create this form to show the browser and to let, the, uh, let it know what's going on. So let's go ahead to action now, just as a side note, if we were just doing a uh, button that we wanted to do an action such as take us to another page, that would work if we wanted to create, you know, put something in there. But let's go ahead and show you how to send it off to an email address of the website owner. We do a mail to, right? Boom, hit that. Um, let's do it. Apologize. So it's just mail to colon, and then we do, oops. All right, so then we go ahead and put an uh, email address in there. We'll just go ahead and make one up for you guys right now. Oops. All right, so now when you hit, when you type in action, and you, in the, within the quotes, you mail to M-A-I-L-T-O, just makes sense, you're mailing this to someone, mail to colon quote, and the email address, and unquote. And we'll leave it as method post. And I believe that's correct, all right, let's see. Oh, and one other type, I mean, one other thing, you want to, uh, we'll take out, class i believe we don't need that let's go ahead and look over here just to make sure all right uh, let's see if we got a good example over here uh, i don't know if i had a good example that i changed over here i wish i did All right, so anyway, let's see if I can remember correctly. You remove this class, you got form, action, mail to, and then we're gonna add one other thing, which is encode type. We'll click on that, and we're just gonna do text plain right there. As you see, it's for the form. And that's it, you guys. So basically what happens when you hit the submit button now, it will actually take you to a mail client. Let's check it out. Let's see what happens. As you see right there, the mail client's popping up. And I don't actually have that set up on my computer. I usually use an online email. Um, but that's it, you guys. That's all you gotta do. And uh, so once again, form, action, equals mail to, right, quote, mail to, colon, then your email address, method equals post, 
and code type equals text plain. And that's it, you guys. That's the entire form. And we'll go ahead and we'll save this. And let's stop sharing for a moment. All right. I'll go back here again. All right, so check it out, you guys. Now we're going to go on to our next uh, thing that we learned yesterday, and we'll do this real quickly, um, which is how to get up on uh, GitHub and submit your uh, your stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here. We're going to go on to GitHub. So it's github.com, and that's a place where you could do version control and uh, upload, uploading, excuse me, uploading of your codes and small amounts of small amounts of uh, you know file sizes. But okay, so basically, if you haven't created an account, you're gonna want to create an account. It's really easy. You can create a username. All right. Oh, let's go. All right, well, anyway, I'm not sure why this is being a pain. It's still loading. All right, so as you see, hey, just as a side note, this is a form right here, you guys. Real easy. They made a username. Um, let's do code. Enlighten. And we'll go ahead and... Let's do a, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Actually, you know what? Okay, and I'll clear some of password. And as you see right there, just like our password uh, section of the form we created, um, Real easy. It's seen it's just, uh you can't you know me can't see what's going on. So let's go ahead and click sign up. And we'll save that. All right, it's telling me that I got too many things open. Let's go ahead and see if I can close some stuff. All right, well. We'll leave it for now. Hopefully, it's not going to mess up too, mess up the uh, quality of the audio too badly. It's saying it might affect my audio. Oh my goodness! So I never use this uh, mail client. It's got like hundreds of times that I apparently I tried to. All right, so we are going to create a plan. Oh, let's see. It says select plan. We don't need them to send us stuff. Oh, what am I missing? Oh, okay, it's asking us to verify. Touch the arrows to roll the image. Oh my goodness, my computer's going nuts. All right. So that's pretty cool. I've never seen that before. Let's see. Will it allow us to select a plan? All right, so we're going to go ahead and choose the free plan for now. All right. And we'll say uh, software engineer. You can do whatever you want, you guys. And we'll, you don't have to actually choose this stuff I don't believe but we didn't do this yesterday um, yeah so there right there you can skip all this stuff but we'll go ahead and uh, just click complete setup all right so now you gotta go ahead and verify your um, account uh, you know what I don't have my phone in here all right let's go ahead and pause the video for a moment no problem all right, so excuse my uh, having to do that real quick. I just had to go ahead and verify the uh, email address. 
So once you verify your email address, which is simply just clicking on a link, uh, it says your email is verified. How would you like to create your first repository? And we would. So now normally you could go ahead and click up here, new repository, right? Just right in the uh, next side, top right, there's a little plus sign. Click on that and you could hit new repository. But since it is our first repository, we're gonna call this, uh, now I, I, I just created this for you guys to see. So I do have another account that I use, but we're gonna go ahead and say, uh, we're gonna say, uh, I don't know, what are we gonna call this? Example, examples. All right, and then we're gonna say example, HTML five um, files or pages for code enlighten YouTube. All right, you don't have to really uh, add that if you don't want to. And by default, uh, it is public if you created a free account. And you must create initialize this repository with a README if you are creating a new repository, excuse me. All right, and that's all you gotta do for there. And we click re create repository. All right, and this one is called examples, as you just saw. And it says right there, examples. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to upload files, which is right here. Click on that. Right here, you could drag in your files. So let's go ahead and do so. Okay. Let's see, where are we at? All right. Uh, I believe it's in here. All right, so here's our folder. We're going to double click that and we're going to just yank everything from here and just drag it onto this box. And as you see, that box changes to show you that you're going to upload it, let it go. And let's see if it uploads it. Did it work? Did it work? I'm not seeing anything happen. Let's try it again. Hopefully I don't repeat it. Why is it not allowing us to do that? Mm, something's going on wrong. I apologize, you guys. Oh, you know what? Okay, we never saved this. Oh, did we? I thought I thought we did. Maybe my computer is just going slow. Who knows? Let's try one more time. This is actually normally very very easy. You guys, I promise that. All right, so let's try it again. Um, I'm just going to read. All right, so let's try it again. Upload files. And uh, I'm going to try to drag them in again. But... All right, so let's see. Why is that not showing up like this? Let's go ahead and pull up our Atom real quick once again. And we're going to click on this. And let's see if we got anything messed up. It looks like it's all right. Sorry, you guys, this normally doesn't take this much time, I promise. Some some of the uh, students yesterday did have issues uh, when they were doing their GitHub page. But, uh, let's see. Um, I wonder. Let's try something real quick. 
I'm not sure if this will work. All right, so it is showing that it's working when we drag it onto our onto our uh, browser, but I'm not sure why that's showing up like that so nicely, and these aren't. They're not showing the Firefox symbol. Nonetheless, <clears throat> let's try it again. And if this, this will definitely pull on, I believe. Let's see. All right, so we do have forms right there. We do have index right there. So normally I'll drag everything at once, but I'm not sure why I was saying what it said. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little comment and say first upload of website files but it's good to put comments in your uh, git um what they're going to call commit so we're going to commit this to the to the master branch and let's go ahead and do that hit commit changes it's going to process our files and upload them okay now as you see we've got the readme file that we initially put in um by creating the uh repository and then we, these are our uploaded files and hopefully our, hopefully our, uh, sorry, hopefully our images got load, uploaded. I'm not seeing it there, but let's go ahead and move on you guys. Um, so once you get your files uploaded and I apologize, this is such a long video, um, but we go to settings and we're gonna show you guys how to get it so where it's live. All right, so pull it, go down here to where it says GitHub pages, right? Right here. And we click none, I'm sorry, we click the none, and then we hit the master branch and that will initialize our, uh, there you go. So once you do that, you're basically activating your GitHub pages and then it'll tell you that your site is ready to be published right here. So let's go ahead and pull this up in a, another tab and let's see what happens. It's saying that site is not found. So, all right, so maybe something is wrong with that index. And now it's possible that um, it hasn't actually uh, processed, but um, I have a feeling Let's go ahead, just for fun. Um, hmm, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Let's go ahead back to uh, the top here. And you guys forgive me for uh, doing it like this. I'm just gonna try something out. We're gonna call this example two. And we're gonna try to debug afterwards what's going on second we'll call this the second attempt at site file uploads all right let's go ahead and initialize this once again just like we did so we're creating a new repository all right so let's try this one more time we're going to upload files and what i'm going to do just for now so I'm going to change this forms example to index. Let's see. Let's go ahead and change our index to index two, and then we'll change our forms to index because we know that that looks pretty good as far as it's showing up as a Firefox HTML file. So let's just upload that, and that's all we're doing. And we'll go ahead and say uh, second attempt simply to show git pages all right so we'll click commit those changes and once that process is we'll go ahead and hit settings and we'll come down here 
and we'll choose master branch. So we're on our GitHub pages right there under the settings. And we'll, if we go down here, you will see that it is available once again at example two. So let's pull that up and we'll see what happens. We're still getting that. Okay. So, all right. If you guys know what's going on, please leave a, uh, please leave a comment below, but I promise you that yesterday when we did it, it worked out fine. Um, so maybe I'm doing something wrong, but you guys can go ahead and if you want to check out, uh, what we got going on, the Git pages, I'm sorry, the GitHub is, uh, it is public. So if you want to go ahead and check it out, it's, C O D E N L I G H T E N code in Latin and then slash forward slash examples. So this is a, uh, this is the uh, repository. If you guys want to check it out and figure out why my page isn't popping up, you can see all the, uh, see all the code right here. All right. Anyway, so that's it, you guys. Um, we're going to try to figure this out. And hopefully by the time we come back to you later today for uh, the review of day number five, we will let you know what the heck was going on and why we we're having troubles. Anyway, that's it for today, you guys. We will see you later and have a wonderful day. All right. This is your boy, Greg Ward from Code and Lightning. Peace.